Proverbs chapter 30. Amen. Father, as we look to you, we ask that you would give us the words to preach. We ask that you would anoint this message this morning. That your words be on my tongue. We bind the enemy away in every power of darkness that would seek to pervert the word of God, that would seek to twist it and cause deception. Those hindering spirits all be gone in the name of Jesus. And I pray that your spirit would rest in this place, that every heart, every ear would be opened. That your spirit, King Jesus, would be magnified in this place. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you turn to Proverbs 30, we're going to look in verse 18. Proverbs 30, the 18th verse. It says, There be three things which are too wonderful for me, yea, four which I know not. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent upon a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a maid. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eats and wipes her mouth and says, I have done no wickedness. Amen. Powerful words. <coughs> Powerful words. Let's read it one more time. There are three things which are too wonderful for me, yea, four which I know not. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent upon a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a maid. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eats and wipes her mouth and says, I have done no wickedness. Amen. All of these things that this proverb speaks of are tracks hidden. Tracks hidden. And that's the title of this morning's message that I wish to give to you. And I'll try not to keep you long here this morning. I know today is Mother's Day and maybe many of you have plans afterwards. But tracks hidden. The way of an eagle in the air. The way of a serpent upon a rock. And the way of a ship in the sea. All of these things, an eagle in the air, it leaves no tracks. A ship upon a rock leaves no tracks. And a ship in the sea, after the wake has gone, there is no trace of where that ship had been. All of these events move across this world, and they leave no trace of that they just crossed it. And then he says, those three are the wonderful things, and something that is beyond his understanding that he does not understand or know why is the way of a man with a maid, meaning a man who is committing adultery and a woman who is committing adultery will attempt to do so and try to cover their tracks. They try to leave no trace of the places that they have been so that they cannot be caught or found. All four of these events leave no tracks. Or attempt to. But then the proverb ends it by saying, In the way of an adulterous woman, she eats, wipes her mouth, and says, I have done no wickedness. But God sees it all. God sees the trace of the eagle. He sees the tracks of the serpent. And he sees the tracks of the ship. And he sees every place that our feet go. We can attempt to try our very best to hide our sin, to cover it, to, uh, to keep it from people being able to see it, to try to hide it so that even if someone would seek us out, they cannot find it. Perhaps we always are attempting to delete our, our past. We're attempting to delete our tracks of where we've gone so that if someone would look into our life, they would not see the sin that's there. But God sees it all. It says in verse 13 of the 28th chapter, He says, He that covers his sins will not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. I want mercy in my life. 
I want the mercy of God to be in my life. I don't want all of the tracks that my feet have traveled to be seen. You don't want all the places that you have gone so that the whole world would see what you have done. It's been said even the very thoughts of a small child, if you knew what even that small child thinks, would bring a blush to your cheeks. The sins of our thoughts, the sins that are deep within us that nobody knows, God sees them. I don't want them to be revealed so that all can see. But yet the Bible would tell us that all of our works will be made known to all. Whether they be good or whether they be bad, all will see one day. But I don't want my sins to be seen by all. I'm not so arrogant and full of myself that I can stand up here and say I've done no wrong. For such, John would say, that man is a liar. I would stand up here and with shame on my face say, I don't want you to know my thoughts. I don't want you to see what I have thought of in my past, the world all my feet have traveled. And if you're honest with yourself, you would say the same. He that tries to cover his sins, he that tries to cover those tracks, like the eagle or like the, the serpent upon a rock or upon a ship on the sea or an adulterer at night, he that covers his sins, he will be found out. His sins will be seen. He will not prosper. But if we confess them and forsake them, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world, that he died and rose again, it says you shall be saved. Amen. 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 If we confess with our mouth and forsake them, Sad to say, many of us will go and we will confess our faults and our failures to a psychiatrist, to a stranger. We might go into a church booth and tell our sins to a priest and confess them. But yet, we are not forgiven. Because we've not gone to the source of the forgiver. A priest cannot forgive your sins because he's sitting himself with sins just like you. He is a man just like I. The only one who can forgive sins is Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus looked upon a lame man and he says, your sins are forgiven you. <laughs> and the people said, who does this man think he is to forgive sins? Only God can forgive sins. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, and how many you know God even knows your thoughts? It says, God, knowing their thoughts, Jesus said to them, what's easier, to forgive sins or to tell this man to get up and be healed? And with stubbornness and rebellion in their heart, they refused to answer him. And it says, Jesus looked at the lame man, he said, I tell you, get up and walk. And strength was given to his bones and he stood up and risen, not only healed in body, but forgiven in soul. Only God can forgive sins. Those men who said such things were actually right. Only God can forgive sins. Yes. But they did not recognize that God Himself, Jesus Christ, stood before Him. And He, it was He that can, and only He that can forgive sins. He that confesseth and forsaketh them, turns away from them. That's repentance. That's recognizing my faults and my sin. And not just asking God to forgive me, but then going right back to it. Like the Bible says, a dog returns to his vomit and a swine to the mire so does a foolish man return to his sin. But a wise man will confess his sin and forsake it. And it says, that man shall have mercy. Happy is the man, verse 14, that fears always. Oh, I fear the Lord. Because yes. he does not carry the sword in vain. Yeah. He will be my judge either as judging my sin upon the cross or whether judging my sin before Him. Either way, He is the judge of all sin. And I want to abide in Him. I want the blood of Jesus to be what took my sin. What took the blow of my punishment. Because I don't stand a chance before the throne of God on my own. He that fears the Lord, happy is he. But he that hardens his heart shall fall into mischief. I want to tell you something this morning. These verses that I've read... 
mean something extra to me. It means something more to me than probably to you. On November 4th, 1999, I was a 16-year-old boy. My heart full of rebellion and sin. My feet had gone many places. Trying to hide my tracks as much as I could so that my parents couldn't find me, couldn't see them. That no one would know where all I had been and what I had done. But in my soul, I was wretched and blind. I was with my cousin. We lived. He lived with me and my parents. We had a bunk bed. I was on the top bunk and he was on the bottom bunk. And the Holy Ghost was coming upon me, convicting me of my sin. And I was trying to not think about it. I knew, close your eyes and go to bed. You'll wake up in the morning and you'll be free from this burden of sin, this reproach that's in your heart. But I couldn't sleep and I picked up an old Bible that my dad had given me. And I just flopped it open. My eyes went to Proverbs 28, 13. He that covers his sins shall not prosper, but whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Happy is the man that fears always, but he that harms his heart shall fall into mischief. And I knew the Holy Ghost was telling me, if you harden your heart this night, if you turn from me right now while the Spirit is moving you, you will surely die. I slammed that Bible closed and I tossed it up on a shelf. And I lied there thinking that was just coincidence that I just happened to turn to that verse. That it really wasn't God. If I can just make it through this night, I know when sun rises in the morning, I'll be able to go about my business like normal. And this, this unbelievable reproach, this, this moving of the Holy Ghost upon me, convicting me of my sin... And let me tell you today, there are buffoons, and I'm going to call them buffoons, who say the Holy Ghost does not convict of sin. And they are straight from the pits of hell. Because if I believed that lie, I would not be saved today. The Holy Ghost was convicting me of my sin. And I said, that's a, that's a, that's a farce. That's, a, that's just something strange. And I thought, to prove it, I'm going to Pick my Bible up again and just prove it. And I, and I opened up to these same verses once again. And my eyes immediately went to he that covers his sins shall not prosper. But whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. And oh, like a thousand tears that flowed. November 4th, 1999. I bowed my knee to Jesus Christ. I confessed all of my sin before him and I forsook it and his spirit came within me and I've never been the same since. For all of them years, I have never been the same. He changed me. I, from that moment, was born again. I was changed forever. These verses mean so much to me. Because I was like the eagle attempting to cover my tracks. The serpent upon a rock. A ship on the sea. An adulterer at night. But God saw it all. And I confessed them. And I forsook them. And he forgave me with mercy. I want to tell you today. I'm no different than anyone else. All must come by the way of the cross. I can't confess my sin to a priest, a pope, a pastor, a mother, a sister, a brother, and be forgiven. The only thing that can wash away my sin is the blood of Jesus Christ. And I will confess my sin before him, and I will forsake it, and I will believe and trust in his atoning work at the cross, and then I shall have mercy. And oh, I need mercy today.
The Bible says God's mercy is new every morning. doesn't matter what you did yesterday. His mercy is new, fresh for you today. It doesn't matter what you did a year ago. His mercy is new right now. He wants to forgive you. He wants to take all of our sin and cast them as far as the east is from the west. He wants to wash you white as snow. He wants to make your sin, though they be like scarlet, to make it as white as snow. And he did it in my life, and he can do it in yours. And those that would watch this over the internet, he can do it in your life as well. But let's look in verse 18. Because he gave this to me November 6th, 1999, two days later. He says, Whosoever walks uprightly shall be saved. But he that is perverse in his ways shall fall at once. I've never given my testimony probably to you. The long version of it is this. November 5th, 1999 was the opening day of rabbit season. My cousin and I had planned on going rabbit hunting that next day, that next morning. Mom had had a dream, several dreams. She had two. One, she had a dream that I was in a lake of water at the beach. A giant beast of a man had his hands upon my face and his thumbs in my eyes. He was piercing his thumbs into my eyeballs and drowning me. Imagine a mother having a dream about that with her son. Today is Mother's Day, and I'll say this. A praying mother is worth more than anything you know. God gave her that dream as she began to pray for my soul. She had another dream and she saw me and someone else walking across the field. And that second party that was with me saw a rabbit run and he lifted up his rifle to shoot at the rabbit and he shot and killed me. She had that dream Several weeks before this event happened, she was praying. And the next day, November 5th, was opening day of rabbit season, and we were planning on going. You can disagree with me if you want, but I know I'm right. I believe with all my heart. I would have a tombstone somewhere that would have the date, November 5th, 1999, on it. As the day of my death, I believe Satan was out to destroy me. But the day before the Holy Ghost came upon me, he reached down to me and he said, Come, if you cover your sins, you will surely fall. But if you will confess and forsake them, I will have mercy upon you. That night I gave my heart to Jesus and I was never the same again. I didn't go rabbit hunting that next day. Because I had new eyes. I didn't want to hang out with the same friends I had before. I didn't want to go to the same places I hung out before. God had rebirthed me. I had a new heart. I had changed lords literally like that. No longer was Lathan the Lord of his life. But Jesus Christ was now Lord of his life. And now from that day on, I have sought the Lord to live my life to his glory. I want to tell you today, Satan is out to seek to see who he can steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus Christ has come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. If you don't know Jesus today, you might have been like me, a 16-year-old boy, lost in sin, going about trying to cover tracks of sin. But God sees our sin. He sees our past. It's not hidden from Him. The only thing that can wash away our tracks and wash away our sins is the blood of Jesus that would come and cover our tracks. Now today, you can look if you like. You might find some dirt on me. I don't know. But if you ask Jesus, if you ask God, He'll say, I see the blood. 
He'll say, I see the blood. I want the blood to be applied to the doorpost of your heart that, he, that the enemy might pass over you. The judgment of God might pass over you. But it's only by the blood of Jesus. If you buy your heart with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is only by the blood. Only by the blood. Do you know Jesus Christ today? Have you been washed in the blood? And I'm just going to be frank with you. I'm talking to every one of us. I know some of you have been here, been in this church for many years. I know that some of you might say, I've been saved for 40 years or more. I, I want every one of us to examine our heart. Because it doesn't matter how well you started this race. It matters how well you ended it. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Have your sins been covered by the blood of Jesus? And it's only done not by taking communion or water baptism. Your sins are not washed away by soap and water. It's washed only by trusting in what Jesus Christ has done. Because I got nothing to bring to this table, nor do you. Have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? If you haven't, if your tracks are still visible to God, nobody looking, let me see your hand today. If your tracks are still visible, let me see your hand today. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, God, thank you. Jesus can wash away our sin. I want us just together. And there's been several that have raised their hand and maybe there would be those that would watch us later over the internet that would say I, he's talking to me I want us to all together say this prayer this prayer is not a magical prayer what makes this prayer special what makes this prayer powerful is what you mean it with your heart by faith in order so those that raise their hand are not left alone I want us to all say it together in unison. That all of our voices might be heard together with theirs. And let's mean it with all of our heart by faith. Dear Heavenly Father, I confess my sin to you now. I recognize I am a sinner. And I need you. I confess and I forsake my sin today and I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior he died and rose again and I believe and I confess that he is my Lord I renounce Satan and every work of darkness and I thank you Jesus for the washing of the blood of Jesus. In Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. It's that simple. It is that easy. If you said that prayer. And you mean it in your heart. Your sins literally were washed away. Those tracks. That's how simple it is. Someone say how can that be? That's just how good God is. If I could bring something to cover up my sin. If I could walk backwards with the palm branch and cover up my tracks that I could say that I covered them up but that no man could boast I can do nothing and I can bring nothing it's all according to Jesus and his fine mercy yes. and he wants to have mercy upon us amen? amen what a glorious God we serve let's just give the Lord a hand clap of praise hallelujah hallelujah